The way you organize your data matters. And I don't just mean the relationships between tables, I mean the files underneath the tables themselves. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a table and here are the parquet files underneath. If I made one giant parquet file, it wouldn't be very performant. So I have to split it somehow. And if I get it wrong, it's gonna ruin my performance. Now, up until now, organizing your data used to be a delightful game of trade-offs. If you partitioned by week, but someone wanted a year's worth of weekend data, they're gonna have to scan 52 files causing an overhead. But if you did it by day and week, then you'd probably end up with files that are far too small to be performant. Plus on those days with huge traffic, you'd probably end up with skew as well. So my suggestion is save yourself the headache and use liquid clustering. With liquid clustering, you specify the columns that people are going to be using to filter on and it'll figure out the optimal file size and it's gonna do this incrementally. Not only does this mean you'll avoid causing inefficient reads, it should also have faster write times. This is well suited to tables that are filtered on columns that have lots of distinct values, columns that have lots of skew, tables that grow quickly over time, or tables that have multiple concurrent writes. One final benefit, if you want to change your clustering columns over time, you absolutely can do, but keep in mind, it's only going to do it for new data that comes in. It's not gonna go back and retroactively cluster old data. This does remove the need to Z order, but if you have any columns in Z order, move those to your cluster by tables, but you will still need to use optimize as that triggers the start of the clustering. It's best for new tables as it's a setting that's specified at the table creation. If you've got an existing table that's got performance issues, it might be worth rewriting it out with liquid clustering, but that's gonna depend very heavily on how big the table is and how often it's queried. Now this does upgrade the version of Delta that you're using. So if you're using this table with a runtime of less than 15.2, or you're using some external readers, check the compatibility before you go ahead and do it. If you like Databricks and want to see what else is hot in Data and AI, follow for more.